I was being chased by huge men dressed all in black, and I knew exactly what they were after. I ran across the lobby as fast as I could, praying that I wouldn't miss the elevator. If they caught me, I was done for. I was carrying a big bag, almost as big as my body. It was so big, I could barely run with it, but I had no other choice. I'd shamed my family, and if I didn't fix it ASAP, who knew what would happen to me? I'd probably turn to dust. Back in America, I'd done something bad. I came home from school one day to find my parents sitting on the couch, surrounded by photos of me. All of them were of me and my boyfriend, or should I say ex-boyfriend now. In the photos, we were kissing and hugging, and one of them showed me leaving his house. But the creepiest one of all was one of us in bed together, which looked like it had been taken from outside the window. I was so upset! For the first time in my life, I started shouting at my parents, asking them how they had gotten these photos. You won't believe it. But they paid a private investigator $50,000 to track my every move. That was the worst day of my life. I knew I'd be punished because my parents are so strict and traditional, but I just assumed they'd ground me and cut off my allowance. Instead, they took things to the extreme and announced that we were moving back to Egypt. Yep, that's right, Egypt, the country we're from. Except, oh yeah, I've never actually lived there. To me, I'm American. We left right after I was born, so the thought of going to live there felt like a catastrophe to me. I told my parents that there was no way on earth I was going, but they said they'd already booked the tickets, and it was a done deal. They said I was acting too much like an American girl, and they were taking me home to teach me how to really behave. It felt like my world was ending. When we got to Egypt, I was shocked. The first day we got there, it was so hot, and I put on my shorts and crop top. I was about to go outside and explore when my mom grabbed me and told me I couldn't go outside dressed like that. Then she gave me a long skirt and a long sleeve top and told me I had to cover up. She even made me wear a scarf over my head. We went outside to buy vegetables and I smiled at the man selling them and I thought my mom was going to slap me. After that, I wasn't allowed to go outside anymore unless I was with her. All I could think about was running back to America and being with my boyfriend. Egypt felt like one giant prison that I'd be stuck in for the rest of my life. And to make matters worse, I was carrying a gigantic secret. You see, when my parents told me we were leaving America, they wouldn't let me out of their sight. But then they had to go out one night and they left me at home alone. As soon as they left, my boyfriend came over. I knew it would be the last time I ever saw him, so we decided to do something crazy and go all the way. We needed one last special memory of each other. The thing is, we forgot to use a condom. I thought it would be fine, but after two months in Egypt, I realized I hadn't had my period. Yep, I was pregnant, and I needed to get an abortion as fast as possible before my parents found out. There was just one little problem. Abortion isn't legal in Egypt, but I managed to find a company online who offered them. Of course, I had to pay a hefty sum. And where was I going to get the money? Well, I stole it from my dad. Now, I wasn't even allowed outside by myself, so I decided to wait until late at night and sneak out after my parents had gone to bed. My plan failed. Apparently, they still didn't trust me, and they had people watching me at all hours of the day and night. As soon as I left the house, I felt like someone was following me, and that's when I started to run. The illegal abortion clinic wasn't that far away, so I figured I could try and lose whoever was following me and still make it there in time for my appointment. The building I needed to go to was just up ahead, and I was so close, but suddenly three men appeared and I ran for my life. As if it wasn't already creepy enough, I realized this clinic was in an abandoned building. I made it to the elevator just in time. An old man was holding the door open as if he was waiting for me, and I leapt in without even thinking twice. He looked pretty creepy, but not as creepy as the three men dressed in black who had been chasing me. One of them looked like my uncle. It wouldn't surprise me if it was. That's how messed up my family is. The clinic had told me to bring enough stuff with me to last a few days, so I packed a big bag full of clothes and food the day before. Now that I thought about it, my parents had probably seen the bag and thought I was planning to run away. No wonder they'd sent people to follow me. If they knew I was on my way to have an abortion, they'd probably murder me. I pressed the seventh floor button after the doors had closed and tried not to look at the creepy old man in there. I could feel his eyes on the back of my head, and when I looked over my shoulder, he was grinning. I wanted to get out of there so badly. I heard the man fiddling with something, and I panicked, thinking it was his zip. But then, I noticed he had pulled on a rope in the corner of the elevator, and suddenly, I fell onto the floor, dropping my huge bag onto my foot. The elevator jerked and came to a complete stop, and the lights started to flicker. In a panic, I started pressing all the buttons, but nothing happened. Then, I felt the man right behind me his breath on my neck, and then he whispered into my ear, 
Looks like we aren't going anywhere anytime soon. In that moment, I didn't know what was worse, being carried away by those three men back to my parents or being stuck in that elevator with someone who appeared to be a psychopath. And why did that man's voice sound so familiar? Well, I had no choice. We were stuck. I tried screaming, but it was useless. I sat down in the corner and covered myself with my bag. I pushed the door with my leg to try to open it, but it didn't help. It was pitch black now but I could feel the man coming towards me. Don't touch me, I screamed. And then he laughed. You can't really get that abortion if you won't at least let me touch you, can you now, he said. What was he talking about? How did he know I was here for an abortion? I froze. And then he started rustling around in his bag and said he had his tools here if we wanted to do it now. Was he mad? I could almost make out the glint of a knife. And then I just started crying. What had I been thinking? Booking some dodgy back alley illegal abortion? If I got out of the elevator alive, I'd just keep the baby and deal with the consequences. I've changed my mind, I whimpered. I'm afraid that's not possible, he replied. My blood ran cold. What did he mean? He came and sat right in front of me and told me if that I didn't get the abortion, he'd tell my parents. And then he said if I did get the abortion, he'd still tell my parents. Unless... Unless I married him. Oh my gosh, he was blackmailing me. What kind of sick person would do that? Are you even a real doctor, I asked, afraid to hear him answer. I can't lie to you. That wouldn't be fair. No, I'm not. But when you called, I liked the sound of your voice, and I thought, oh, she will make a very good wife. And so here we are. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, I did break the elevator. Gives us time to get to know each other better. Never in my worst nightmares did I ever imagine this could happen to me. This was worse than a horror movie. My life was a complete mess. For seven days, we were stuck in there together. I'm not joking. For the first 24 hours, I refused to speak to the man. I cowered in the corner and used my bag as a blanket. He kept talking to me nonstop, telling me about his little house that we could live in together and his favorite parks to walk in. I missed my American boyfriend so much, I didn't even have a cell phone anymore. My parents had taken it off of me as part of my punishment. Luckily, I had been told to bring food. Otherwise, I'd have starved to death. I can't believe he'd set this all up. Never in a million years would I marry this disgusting man. During the next few days, whenever the sun rose, I could see the man clearly. It shone directly through the thin crack in the door. I looked at him as he snored and felt so grossed out. He was so old and hairy, and after a few days, he smelled so bad. I kept spraying my perfume I'd brought, but even that didn't cover up the stink. And after a few days, we obviously had to use a toilet. We'd been peeing in bottles in the dark, and the smell of urine was everywhere. But when it came to doing a number two, I held it in as long as I could. I wish I could tell you that moment didn't come for us both, but it did. Don't worry, I'll save you the gory details. I kept thinking, how many other innocent girls had this man done this to? After five long days, I did something I never thought I would. I waited for the creepy man to fall asleep, and I took off my jacket and tried to strangle him with it. That was so dumb of me, because obviously I wasn't strong enough to do it, and he only thought I was trying to hit on him. Ew! I was going to die in there, I knew it. He kept talking to me about the importance of dressing like a real woman, and covering up, and asking me what dishes I like to cook, and honestly, I couldn't stand it. On the seventh day, and I knew it had been seven days because my hair felt like a rat's tail. That's how greasy it was. The man turned to me and said, I think you've learned your lesson now. And then I don't know what he did to the rope to the back of the elevator, but suddenly we were moving again and going down and the doors opened and I felt blinded. It was so bright. I covered my eyes and almost had to crawl out. I could barely walk. Standing there, right in front of me, was my mom and dad and they were grinning. And that's when it dawned on me. They'd done this. They'd set this whole thing up. I was right. They had. And before I could even do anything, like run away for real this time, they took me by the arms and dragged me to the car. I looked back at the old man and he waved. And then I never saw him again. In the car, my mom turned to me and then said, That's what you get for letting that American boy impregnate you. Now, before we take you home, you are going to get that abortion. And then if you don't behave, you'll be marrying that man for real. Oh, and did you really think we didn't know what you were up to? We're watching your every move, remember? After that, I couldn't stay with my parents another moment. I didn't want their money or their care, so one night I stole an expensive piece of jewelry from my mother's drawer and I bought a ticket back to the US and ran away. And no, 
I didn't end up getting an abortion. My boyfriend was waiting for me, and he promised to support me and raise the baby together. Hi, I'm Angie, and up until last week, I felt like I had it all. An amazing boyfriend, the greatest best friend, good enough grades to get into my top choice college, and the prom coming up. The best part was how well my best friend Lucy and my boyfriend Jordan got on. You always hear those horror stories of best friends getting jealous of how much time you spend with your boyfriend. Well, not me. We all hung out together and it felt so easy. I didn't have to divide my time between them. We all love surfing, so most weekends we'd head to the beach and catch some waves. Anyway, so Lucy's date to the prom broke his leg last week, so he wouldn't be able to go. I felt really bad for her, so I said I'd come over to her place and get ready and we could go together with Jordan. I didn't want her to be on her own for prom. We had been excited for this night all year. I put on some music while we were getting ready. I couldn't wait for Jordan to see me in my dress. Lucy went to take a shower, so I decided I'd paint my nails while she did that. I'd brought the wrong shade of red, but I knew Lucy would have loads in her dressing table, so I went to go and find a brighter one. As I opened the first drawer, I noticed something tucked away at the back. I'd seen it before in her bag, and I was pretty sure it was a diary of some sorts. I know I shouldn't have done this, but I couldn't help it. I could hear Lucy singing, so I knew she'd be a while. I quickly pulled the diary out and opened it. I mean, Lucy tells me absolutely everything anyway, so technically I wasn't even snooping, right? As I flicked through the pages, I kept seeing the same name over and over again. I couldn't believe it. My heart started thumping and I felt like I was going to have a panic attack. Lucy was in love with Jordan. But this made no sense. I kept reading and it just got worse and worse. Lucy was trying to break me and Jordan up. This was why she'd applied to the same colleges as him. I couldn't stop reading. Near the end of the diary, I felt something bulging out. I opened the last page and a pile of notes spilled out onto the floor. I recognised Jordan's handwriting straight away. These were love notes. He had even put hearts around her name. He never put hearts around my name on the notes he passed me in class. I suddenly felt sick. I could hear Lucy getting out of the shower. I figured I had about three minutes before she caught me, so I chose a few random notes to read quickly. Jordan had written that he was planning to break up with me after the prom, and then him and Lucy could go live there happily ever after at college together. I wanted this to be some kind of sick prank. Why was this happening to me? I grabbed the diary and shoved it in my bag, along with my dress, and started heading for the stairs. I bumped straight into Lucy as she came out of the bathroom. I told her my mum had called and there'd been an emergency with my gran and I had to go. I tried not to look at her because I knew I'd either cry or want to slap her, so I just said, have fun at the prom with Jordan and our friends and I'll call you tomorrow. However, I didn't head straight home. I went straight to the pet shop and bought a few little treats for Jordan. Then I quickly went home and got ready. My mum asked me why I was taking such a big handbag to the prom, but I just smiled sweetly. I waited in the janitor's closet until everyone had arrived, and then I timed my entrance perfectly. The band were playing a super slow song, and all the couples were dancing close together. I tiptoed onto the dance floor, and before anyone could even notice me, I opened my bag and tipped it over the top of Jordan and Lucy, who were already so close they were almost kissing. Jordan screamed hysterically like a little girl and started crying. Six baby rats were now running down Jordan and Lucy's arms, and one even got stuck in the front of Lucy's dress. I actually felt a bit sorry for the rats, but I soon forgot that when I saw the looks on their faces. They kept screaming, and I just stood there with my arms crossed, giving them dagger eyes. They ran off, with the rats running behind them, and I could hear them crying. I was happy Jordan will be remembered as the coward chicken who's afraid of rats. Everyone else by then was staring at me, and the band stopped playing. My other friends came running over, and that's when I pulled the diary out. They needed to see the evidence. Well, that's if Jordan and Lucy slow dancing together wasn't already enough evidence. My friends couldn't believe what they'd done. They started screaming at them, cheaters! And I'm sure they heard that because they looked back at us and left quickly, feeling ashamed, I hope. 
But you know what? I feel much better. And that night turned out to be the best prom night ever. Okay, so I might have lost both my best friend and boyfriend in one night, but that's better than living a lie, right? They deserve each other.